That's when you know shit's about to go down. And what? it is. What? They're heavy. What? So, we've reacted to TVXQ in the past as a two-member group, but now we're reacting to a song that they released as a five-member group on their album called Triangle. TVXQ is marketed as an acapella dance group, and so they're cool. most known for their ballads. But this song is their first powerful concept after the first soft acapella dance songs. The lyrics are about changing social apathy and how as an individual you have the power to fight against the diminished values of a society, yeah. which also explains the melodramatic music video. The style was influenced by the okay. visual key style of Japanese rock and metal bands. You guys will be reacting to the extended version of the song, which is featuring two other artists under s and Entertainment. The first one is Boa, who is a female solo artist, and the next one is Trax, which is actually a rock band. But the main reason why we're reacting to this song is because it quotes a classical piece. Mm. Uh -oh. Fight the power that be! Kidding me? That's the professors marking our grades, okay? <laughs> We're giving you an assignment. What is this, Final Fantasy? So that song is used in like everything. Mozart 40. Oh, yeah, everything, including our oral skills final. Mozart's dabbing in his grave. <laughs> This is called a contrafactum. When you take a melody from something else and you put it into a piece that it did not intentionally, it did not really belong to. I'm shook of. Wait, did it just like, it, there was like no connection. Oh my God. Oh wait, that's actually pretty badass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> In music, we like to connect our you know, different segments, different motives and whatnot. Transitioning materials, that we call it, but there was no transition, it was like... Why is that vocal melody just... It just seems like an afterthought after all that instrumental rage. <sighs> it works really well. Not mad. I think they wrote it around confused. it. I, that's, I mean... I, well, either that or the fact that it's not that obscure of a chord progression in Mozart 40. Yeah, like, it really adds to their song, though. That's so interesting. They've taken Mozart's melody, they've changed the key dramatically, and they have ornamented it. I like the way that they're like superimposed, the guitars. Something about that really works. It's like they're hamming it up on purpose. That's more like it. Oh. Love their voice. But they are badass though. Yeah, it's just no, they like really are. the styling is just so it's so interesting how I like the blonde hair man. Oh, see right here. Their melody does not quite line up with really? Mozart's harmony. It's just like a little off. They do a pretty good job, though, for the most part. Why are they so cool? Why are they singing this? It's like they're in ballad mode when there's this hard song. And the weirdest part is, I kind of like it. Is that a flat two? That's a flat two. I want to know where I like his voice. Where this started. I feel like that's a good symphony. I see the ballad aspect a lot, actually. See, she sounds like she's actually singing in the same style as the rest of the song is. Her voice is very powerful sounding. Oh, she's good. She is singing from the diaphragm, let she me is, tell ya. Yeah. She can't say. Oh, uh, get it, girl. The camera's all blurry. It's like just... that effect. That's when you know shit's about to go down. And what? it is! What? 
They're heavy. What? <laughs> what? I noticed this was the extended version. I can tell which part's extended. Actually, screw Yes! This is, this, is back to this is a roller coaster. This is a roller coaster. This is a lot. That bass line. Slay me. Oh, that's not healthy. That high note was not good. No. Screamo's not great on the chords. This is essential K pop, I think. You have to experience this. Once in your life, there's the there's the soprano. See, it all comes back together. Interesting. I can't tell if it was voice or like like weird ass theremin. And we're done. I I have absolutely no idea what we just witnessed. Um. So, <laughs> what's this? Okay. Obviously, three themes. There's the Mozart, and then there's the heavy metal-ish thing. Which actually, that I think that was the best part. Like that sounded like. Do you guys know Incubus? Like their like first albums. That's kind of what it sounded like. And then uh, the like Backstreet Boys with like strings in the background. So triangle. Okay. It's a triangle. Yeah. Like some really strange love triangle. I guess. It's cr it's actually. Like, okay, at first, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> like that with the Mozart, but uh, it actually starts to work towards the middle and then the end. It's like, oh my gosh, you created something <laughs> and it made sense. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's like a weird musical baby. It's like Frankenstein featuring our boy Famous Amadeus dropping his latest album. Can you imagine? K9. Like, can, I, I don't think he could comprehend what just happened. What, what, would you, what would, how is your response to this? I really, okay, no, like, I, I look like I'm so offended right now, but I'm actually not. Like, I'm so into it, I'm just so confused. That was not my perception of what K-pop could be. Well, the section where they had, where they were screaming and there was all the guitars, that was very metal. But the rest of it was, it was a lot of, I could definitely tell, like, the acapella vibe they had going. It was, it felt, like, very acapella with the Mozart underneath and, like, you know, a guitar mm. and a bass beat. So I could definitely see where their roots come from. Yeah. I thought it was ingenious. I just think it's great exposure for people who might not listen to classical music avidly. I think it's a great connection. I mean, this idea of taking a pre-existing melody and turning it into a completely new genre, I mean, that's existed for hundreds, hundreds of years. I mean, in church music, when they would be doing like motets, they would take you know, like French chansons, like, you know, secular yeah. folk mm -hmm. tunes, and they would bring it in and they'd put it into like a motet or an oratorio, and it would be like this little quote of something people would know. So this idea of taking that kind of melody and turning it into something wildly different, I mean, there's a lots of ways that you could take pre-existing melodies and turn it into something new. And this yeah. one felt, to me, this one felt a little corny and like overly dramatic. They were trying really, really hard. They were, to yeah. be super dramatic. But, but honestly, you know. that's like the OG, like Easter egg. Composers just like quoting other people. Yeah. Super cool. I'm ready for Isaac's thoughts. To overplay the first theme, and not develop it the way that Mozart did is, I think it's reprehensible almost. It's sacrilege. It's not. What I just said does not represent my own thoughts. And it's, I feel like they're just using Mozart just to, just as a catchphrase. See, that's the thing. It's like even like in Brahms' uh, Haydn variations. variations, he takes some of the variations from Haydn, but still makes it very beautiful and has his own color. But this one, it's like, it guess it's the same, but man, it was like, it was so overused to the point where it's just like you're just beating it, beating like a dead horse mm. to make it run. And the reason why I have such a personal opinion to this is because I really enjoy listening to Mozart 40. And it's like my childhood song. So like to defame it in that way, it's like, man, that hurts. I think that the reason that the song works so well is because Mozart 40 is a piece that whether you're classically trained or not, you know the first theme. Because of that, there's a meme-like quality to it. And so if they're gonna use it, 
they could either pay a really nice homage to it, mm. or they could totally ham it up. And ham it up they did, and it was so good. Yeah. You know, at first when the vocal melody came in, I thought, okay, this is a very unimpressive vocal melody. But I think if they're gonna repeat the great melody that is Mozart 40 over and over again, they might as well have the, sing the singing be kind of complementary to that. And I think that was actually a very clever choice. And I think there is a lot of cohesiveness to bringing the guitar in and then leaving it out for a bit and then having that full screamo section and then having it close off the piece with that, those riffs. There is, it's like all the elements of the song kind of come together to form this weirdly symphonic collage of ideas. Oh, that was the mashup of the century. Let's just stop making music now and yeah. just play this song only. I feel like talking about this will not do it justice. Okay, so having <laughs> Mozart 40 in there, like super recognizable, that kind of gives the song extra power without doing anything. Genius, whoever wrote the song is a genius because of that. Except for Lindsay. No, I really <laughs> liked it. I just can't even say anything. I want to watch that video like so Are many times. Are you struck over and by over again. their outfits? And... I'm just struck by everything. I like how all of it, there was just <laughs> so much. The level that this is at is just like, psh, which like I'm used to psh for K pop, but I'm not used to psh, which is like. Wait, I need to like. Psh. <laughs> That's what this song was at. It's just so extra. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> no, I really liked it. Hello everyone, I'm Umi and I'm the channel runner of React to the K. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you're curious about the videos that we'll be reacting to in the future, I put a link to a doc with our release schedule in the description. Last but not least, if you'd like to support our channel, you can help us out by pledging any amount you would like on our Patreon. On Patreon, you can get access to full unedited pair reaction playlists, reactions to Japanese releases, and much more. And of course, a huge shout out and thank you to our superstar patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Bye.